the draft was kind of a, uh, you had to sign up and when you turned 18 and then uh, they drew number, allotting allotment numbers. And uh, a friend of mine had graduated in 71 and I was graduating in 72. In the spring of 72, he, uh, he had number 17 and he was g gonna get drafted in the army. Well, my number was seven, so it was just a matter of time. Sometime in the 72, I would have got drafted, so I de decided to join the Navy and uh, uh, see the world. Uh, boot camp was, um, it was more walking and more physical exercise. Um, that way, we didn't do a lot of rifle training. We did some, and then uh, a lot of swimming. I was pretty good at swimmer, so I was on the swim team. Some people were on the track team and drill team, and I did, we did that. And, uh, then I graduated from boot camp and then at, uh, from uh, Chicago, uh, and then uh, went back to North Chicago to uh, uh, what they like an A school for six weeks. Finished that six weeks course and got assigned to uh, the uh, Decatur in Long Beach at that time. Long Beach was still a, still a base. They closed it down uh, in 73 and a year, uh, year later. Decatur had two separate fire rooms and it was called a, it was a uh, twin screw destroyer. And uh, so I worked the for, uh, forward fire room and uh, you had a, they called it the hole, it's an 18 foot ladder from the, from the deck down to the boiler room itself and straight up and straight down. And, and you had to haul in, uh, every, everything in and out of that, your supplies. And so um, in the morning, what you would normally do, uh, if you didn't have watch, you'd have a, um, you'd go up muster on the, uh, on, a, on the deck with your division and you'd uh, usually be um, in a clean uniform and you would get your um, um, information for the day and then you would go down and get dressed in your um, other, your, dirt, your more or less dirty clothes and easily work on the uh, boilers or, or work on pumps or whatever. And, depending on whether you were um, out to sea or, uh, you know, in port. We had a boiler uh, uh, explosion, or it actually sucked, it didn't actually blow up, but it sucked in our smokestack. And uh, it, uh, the, one of our um, second classes tried to light it off the back wall, is what they call. <laughs> Instead of using a torch, they opened the uh, fuel gun and the fuel tries to light off on a red hot brick, but you get too much fuel in there and that's what caused the explosion. So when it, when it exploded, it, it sucked in all the metal stack, all the stack work and then it, in turn ruined the boiler because you could, didn't have any place to, to smoke the, to uh, leave the uh, boiler. So we were down to one engine then. We went to, um, back to the Philippines and we had to end up, uh, going back into, uh, 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 we got a, a separate line fixed to where we could, what they call cross tie the, um, the engine rooms. So um, the, F, the forward fire room, the one, the boiler that was bad, we could uh, end up, we could run that uh, steam from the, uh, from the aft fire room to the forward engine room and power both the propellers and so then we um, stayed out for about another couple more, two, maybe two months we were in and out. And then we w deployed back to, uh, back to Long Beach and then we went to, um, into dry dock or uh, in, to Portland, Oregon, to, in Swan Island they call it, and had the stacks repaired. We were there all oh, about four months from October and all the way up into January. The second class that, that did that was in, the, he got busted back down to rank and then, and you had to, you know, be, you was more of aware that, that uh, something could go wrong really quick, you know, if you, if you didn't take the correct steps to, to light the boiler off or, or, you know, vent the uh, steam lines, make sure you didn't get water to the, uh, to the turbine blades. Yeah, there's a lot more work on the on the Decatur, but um, you 
lot more basic training and, and you uh, got to know your boilers a lot better off on that. And then when I went to the Reasoner, it was more or less, it was all, um, a lot of your automatic stuff. So actually a boiler room had a control room that was air conditioned. So, and everything was automatic as far as you run the boilers from that control room. And then uh, we had what they call lower level men, that, which was burners. And then I, I did burner watch most of the time on the Reasoner. Um, I enjoyed the work more on the Reasoner <laughs> because of the, uh, the Decatur being um, so old, there was, you know, a lot more work to it. And, but as far as traditions, um, uh, um, the way that the, the Navy, um, your, 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 your discipline and that kind of set thing, I really enjoyed that part of it. And, uh, your structured, more structured life, and being with your your fellow shipmates, and and uh, you're part of a team, and like I say, the structured part of it, and uh, and the the pride and everything, it it all it's kind of a one package deal for me. The 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 uh, pool of coming home and starting to work, you know, and doing that was more than actual staying in, but. Uh, uh, hindsight, I'm sure most of your Navy people or even some in the Army would say they would, they would wish they would have re-enlisted. But uh, yeah, I, I really, at that time, I wish I would have re-enlisted and stayed in them 20 or 30 years.